Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the garden. Welcome to Wednesday. We are, of course, very excited because Tom Chaplin is uh, waiting in the wings to come and to talk to us about the, the wonderful Keen song, Somewhere Only We Know, that we started this week. Bye. Very good. Um, now it mm. is time, I think, to to welcome Mr. Golden Tonsils himself, Mr. Tom Chapman, <laughs> from his home studio. Hello, Tom. How are you? Terrible times at the moment, but are you are you holding it together? Uh, I am holding it together. I am actually taking the most of this opportunity to uh, spend some lovely quality time with the family, and we have a very nice kind of isolation haven down here in the Kent countryside. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of that, a bit of homeschooling and um, uh, writing some songs, spending a lot of time in here, which has been lovely. So uh, I know it's very tough for a lot of people out there, but uh, my experience has been that it's been rather lovely for us uh, here in our little bubble. I think it's very mixed, isn't it? I think there are uh, mm. for, for people. Certainly for musicians, we, we do like our own company and we do need this time to, to reset and recharge and, and come back. You know, I, I know that you're out on tour a lot and recording studio and doing, doing all, sorts, all sorts of things. So for, for that, it's quite, it's quite nice to just have these, da these down moments. And then, and then you feel guilty that, oh, gosh, actually, I know I, I should be I'm having a much harder time. But um, it, it is, uh, it's a strange time, isn't it? Because you do start to feel very disconnected from all that, you know, you see the news stories. You feel very, very disconnected from that when you're in isolation. Now, Tom, I've got lots of questions for you here from members of the public. Um, the, uh, now, I know that you, you weren't the writer of, of this wonderful song somewhere, only we know. That was uh, Tim, is that right? Uh, uh, but you, what, what do you know what inspired these lyrics? Says Nick Fletcher. Well, well, it was a time when we were, um, we'd spent several years as a band trying to hone our skills and get better. Um, and I think we felt like there were a lot of our friends, contemporaries around us who were, because we, by that point we were in our 20s, and there were a lot of people around us who were sort of moving on uh, to bigger and better things, getting jobs and degrees, and we kind of felt a bit stranded uh, doing this kind of crazy dream of trying to be a band and trying to be successful. Um, and I think there were a lot of songs around that time um, that were written, uh, Everybody's Change will be, be one of them, that was sort of about trying to uh, make sense of that. Um, mm. And I think this song is about, I think for us as a band, has always been about that idea of um, having this kind of little place, whether it's uh, geographical, physical, uh, or just a place sort of in your mind or in your heart that you can go to to find that sense of solace, that sense of connection. Um, which I think was something um, that we we yearned for at that time, and in a way we had when we came together as a band. I think in that way it's it's a very universal song. I I, I connected with that spirit immediately, that sense of melancholy, but also sort of optimism and hope in in finding somewhere a little a little connection with someone. And I feel like that's a very relevant. That's why I I chose this song. I thought it, it just really really speaks to me at the moment, you know, somewhere only we know. I mean, we can't go, so it is a little bit sweet. We can't go anywhere, but we can still find <laughs> connections with people like as we are now or with, you know, friends on Zoom or, or or through the Great British Home Chorus. You know, we're making connections and I'm, I'm, I think that's so important, isn't it, to find that little in a, in a kind of crazy world where the news stories are terrifying to find that little bit of space. Let me ask you your, the next question. Um, uh, Sophie Louise Power says, any tips to remaining creative during isolation? Um, well, I think in a way is it, it, it can actually kind of create a pressure, can't it? This, this idea, well, I've got all this time and I must come up with something brilliant. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and actually, I always think that the great thing about creativity is, is, is not really about the end result. It's always about the process. So mm. uh, it's, I think just not, not getting phased by it um, and also just doing it, you know, and, yeah. uh, and enjoying that process. And if, you, and if you don't come up with anything good, it doesn't matter. Try something else. Switch into I think that's very relevant yeah. for the choir. 
Very relevant for the choir because uh, for me, this has been very much about d- doing it daily and getting into a routine of making music and, and being being creative has been really important in keeping me going. There are times when you think, oh, you know, I've got to get, let's do it again. But then once you get into your stride, it, it, it's very, very helpful, you know, for, for mental health. You know, we, it's, it's really important to keep going. Right. Next question. Um, uh, oh, this is a good question. We've just done our warm up. But, but Paige Harding says, do you have any warm ups before your shows and do you do any tongue twisters uh, is there anything you can share with us any how do you oh, get those I gold could, tonsils I mean, warm your, your tongue your tongue twisters are, are brilliant and i'm afraid that i'm i'm just not that kind of um uh forensic with my with my warm-ups i think um the thing about my, my voice is it i sort of it's a bit like a kind of, it's like a big old uh uh crusty machine <laughs> And, you know, it, it takes, at the beginning of a tour, it takes a hell of a lot of warming up to get it into the kind of shape that I want it to mm. be in, to sort of survive doing two hours of singing every night. But actually, once I've got to that point and then I'm singing every day, it's actually then about doing the opposite, which is protecting it and trying not mm. to, to speak and not to sing during the day and saving my voice as much as I can for the shows. But... Um, you know, in the lead up to a tour, uh, or if we're recording, I'll just I'll just try and sing as much as possible leading up to that, but but just ease myself in. I think if you put too much pressure on your voice too quickly, um, mm. then you end up creating problems. Um, so I think that's absolutely you know, I, correct. I'll, I'll, yeah. I do think that um, a lot of people are finding, you know, when we, when we started in week one, you think, why are we doing all these warm ups? Why are we, what, what's going on here? And actually, as, as it goes on, you start to see the effect, just like all those people doing Joe Wicks every morning. They're starting to got thighs of steel. <laughs> now, look, this is a next all right, final question here, but um, uh, or maybe we've got time for just one more. Um, uh, Kathy Heaton has asked, this is very intellectual, this question. Keen in Irish yes. means battle. Which is where you grew up, she says. I haven't fact checked this at all. But in old English it means proud or brave. Wow. And then she goes on to say, You have overcome your own battles, as have we all. Uh, did you did that change your writing style or did it give new meaning to the old songs? Pretty good question. <laughs> Well, I have never heard uh, uh, about keen meaning battle in Irish. That's very interesting. Um, uh, nor indeed about uh, in Old English it meaning proud. So that that's surprisingly, you'd have thought by this stage. Uh, I I, somebody else heard. would have said it. I know. I'm, I'm going yeah. to check it. Um, yeah, she must have made it up. Um, but um, yes, I mean, I think the. Uh, well, actually, with Keen, we took such a long time away. We had seven years between uh, the f- fourth record and the fifth record. Is that right? No. Yes, the fourth record and the fifth record. So we had all this time where we didn't sing those songs. And I think going back to them in the last couple of years, alongside the new Keen record, uh, it was lovely um, to, to be able to revisit those old songs and feel like they had life again. You know, I think when, you, when you're on the road, um, year in, year out, and you're playing the same songs, however much you love them, however good they are, eventually you get tired of them and you start to go through the motions. So I think one of the great things about taking some time out, seven years, <laughs> has been that actually singing songs like Summer Only We Know or Everybody's Changing or all these sort of old songs that we've sung a thousand times, they, they've taken on this new life again. Um, mm. And we're able to kind of uh, cherish them, I think, a lot more again, which I, has, has been lovely. I, now I think that is relevant for for everyone because I I'm a great one for advocating finding your own personal meaning in a song, uh, and attaching you know mm. your own little images in the, in your mind. And you know, as you're singing these words, it sh- you know I'm asking the Great British Hand Chorus to to sing to camera and to record some of these songs. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's very important that they, that they do that, that they don't go through the motions, that they don't think, oh, I've done this song 15, 15 times in rehearsal. Now I right. can just, you know, go to sleep. It's so important to keep that alive. Um, any other words of wisdom about, before we go get on to cracking on to rehearsing this, um, 
any other words of wisdom for singing somewhere uh, only we know because i should say it's it's quite a high for tenor this isn't it it's at the it's at the top of top of the, the choir tenor range any any tips well this is very interesting yes i think there are some tips i mean i think the thing about the song that always struck me when uh when we when when tim first played the first demo that i heard of it uh was that it's kind of um a song that that really builds it builds and it builds and it builds so you know you've got the first verse which i think is is suited to sort of singing very sort of tenderly you want to connect with the audience's ear so you sort of i walked across an empty lane i knew the pathway like the back of my hand so you really want to kind of you want to you know, it's like you're sort of whispering in their ear. Come on, let's go to this place. Let's, let's. Uh, you know, you're trying to take them there. And then that first, the first sort of bridge, um, it it sort of steps up, but and it's and it's very catchy. And when I first heard the song, I thought, oh, this is a chorus. You know, oh, simple thing. And but but it's not actually. It's sort of tricking you. Uh, so that bit, because it's very high, as you say. Um, I, I, I can sort of switch between falsetto and chest voice, so in, in, in that sort of height uh, in my voice. So, um, so the first time I sing it kind of, oh simple thing, where have you gone? So I'm sort of singing that in falsetto. But then when it returns, when everything sort of steps up in the next verse and the next bridge, I can sort of give it a bit more oomph with my, with my chest voice. So it's, oh simple thing, where have you gone? But I'm still then leaving something for the chorus, which in a way comes as a bit of a surprise, you know. So you, so I think, yeah. So when it hits, so you want to leave something for that moment. Um, so my my advice would be, yes, yeah, start very conversational, very whispery, very beautiful, and then just keep trying to step it up as the song progresses. So when you arrive at that big. You know, you're ready to give everything at that point. Um, and I, I think that's, I, I, that's I'm trying to think. It is a very, um, structurally, it makes you wait a long time actually before you get to that moment and it and it, yeah. i feel like i've always felt that that's one of the secrets of the song and why it delivers because it, it 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 teases you doesn't it um thank you that that th those are excellent dynamics basically absolutely really yes. really uh, really useful uh, um, and one one more question i've been asking people about um just how much do you think about uh, line when you're singing because uh, it, you know the connecting these sorts of i'm getting old da, 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 da. you've got quite a sort of lyrical lines there is that something that's um particularly important to you i mean it, it seems like a feature of keen songs that you you have these very long lyrical lines uh it's very hard to know because i think probably a lot of that is very unconscious for me now and, I, and, it, and it's just it's just part of the dna of, of what we do as a band um i one, one thing that we always talk about when we're recording vocals um and tim and i will spend a lot of time you know me in the vocal booth and him on the other side sort of talking through how to try and eke the most emotion out of the line possible uh we, I think we, we, we actually talk about this idea of a kind of, um, I suppose, like an imaginary sort of uh, dial of emotion. <laughs> it sounds, sounds very contrived, but in a way, I suppose for me, what that is, it's a place inside me of, 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 of often of real sadness, you know, um, that I can go to. Um, so if there's a line where I really want to, to sort of, touch someone and say something really beautiful and emotional i'll sort of go to that place and i'll try and i'll try and switch that dial up even more and yeah. whether it's a sort of little croak, croak of the voice or just accessing something inside you that that makes you uh i don't know express yourself um in a, in a more kind of emotional way um then you've just got to find it got to find it for, for me I, I i do call it like the emotion button or whatever <laughs> But, but obviously, I think that, in reality, I suppose, yeah, 
could be anything. I, I, I often think of it as like a wellspring that, you know, I can be playing a piece of music and this little thing just, just sort of bubbles mm. up and you don't know from where. And I might be playing something fairly ordinary and it, it just, and it takes you over. And I think that is the magic of singing, isn't it? It's the magic of music. Mm. And, and for all of the people uh, watching and, and taking part in the Great British Home Chorus, I feel like that activity that you're describing is the, is the reason we all do it. Because it's the moment mm. where, you know, even in, the, in, in terrible, terrible times, we let something out and we, and we feel like it, okay, it was, it was awful, but it went somewhere. I think that, that's so, so important. Um, uh, somebody sent a really nice quote on uh, Twitter, uh, just as a final thought, um, which was, uh, I think it's Bertolt Brecht. And he said, um, you know, in, uh, in the difficult times, will there still be singing? And he said, yes, there will be singing about the difficult times and i think i think you know we all we all need that don't we we all need a song in our heart right now yeah absolutely absolutely listen tom it's so lovely to see you thank you very much for your wise words uh, stay safe thank you for being i think i think ladies and gentlemen our top guest our top guest so far uh, on the great british Tone chorus see you soon we're going to crack on with the rehearsal okay everyone thank you good luck everyone good luck Right, let's get our scores out and we are going to go straight to the, uh, here we are, we're going to go straight to the beginning of the song. I'm going to crack straight in at the beginning and let's see how you feel about that. Um, oh, hello. Have we, have we, I think we've got, have we got a technical issue. I'm sorry, I've just, 